Hi Booktube and welcome to a new video. So I didn't make a single tag video throughout the month of January and yet here we are first week of February and this is my second tag in, in a few days. This is the 52 nifty bookish questions which is a rapid fire um, tag. Um, I haven't been tagged but I saw Cilia's and um, I've just finished watching that about 10 minutes ago. I thought well this sounds good so uh, I'm going to go for it. Uh, I'll post the original uh, tag link in the show notes below. Number one, what book are you reading right now? So this is The Ice Palace by um, Targay Vesas, who I'm sure uh, my Norwegian friends can correct me on that awful pronunciation. Uh, I've almost finished it, it's a short book, and enjoying it mightily. Question two, what was the last thing you highlighted? Um, I don't highlight books the last thing I highlighted was my own writing when bits when I've found something that really doesn't work I highlight it uh, question three what do you plan to read next uh, well it's a buddy read with uh, Celia self self same Celia as I mentioned this is Clarice Spectre, the passion according to GH and we're due to start that Monday today is Thursday and this video will be up on Friday so just after the weekend four one fiction writing writer living or dead with which I would like to grab a drink Samuel Beckett who would drink me under the table. Five, one non-fiction writer, living or dead, with which I would like to grab a drink. Um, non-fiction. Um, don't know, nothing comes to mind on that, sorry. Oh yeah, I'll tell you what, let's have, let's have uh, Peter Kropotkin, the anarchist theorist. Um, one poet, living or dead, with which I'd like to grab a drink. Don't read poetry, sorry. Uh, although, um, which is that poet who lived an extravagant... Well, yeah, Byron's probably worth a drink, isn't he? Um, seven, one booktuber with which I'd like to grab a drink. Well, any booktuber who comes over from a foreign country, uh, as Jason from Old Chapters, um, old Blues Chapter and Verse did last year, and we had a drink and a meal. And uh, at the end of this month, Celia and Bookish North, Elizabeth at Bookish North, hopefully we're going to meet up and grab a drink and something to eat. Eight, Emily Dickinson or Edgar Allan Poe? Neither. Nine, Hemingway or Fitzgerald? Fitzgerald, grudgingly, because uh, I, I, you know, I really don't like Hemingway, so uh, Fitzgerald wins by default, really. Uh, Ten, Jane Austen or Charles Dickens? Neither. Eleven, Harris or Hitchens? I don't know who we mean by Harris. Do we mean Thomas Harris, the writer of Hannibal? I'm sure you're not comparing him to um, Christopher Hitchens. Um, so... I'm going to say neither. I don't know who Harris is, and I've read one Hitchens book, so neither. Um, Twelve, Stephen King or Michael Crichton? Definitely neither. Absolutely neither. Sorry, uh, that's two of my bet noirs. Um, Thirteen, Brett Easton Ellis or Chuck Palaha uh, Palahaniuk? Well, I've never read Palahaniuk, but because I've read uh, Brett Easton Ellis, I'm going to say Palahaniuk. Fourteen, Kurt Vonnegut or John Green? Kurt Vonnegut. Fifteen, Shakespeare's Poems or Plays? Plays. Uh, 16. Adrian Fort or Dalton Gentry? Sorry, I don't know who either of those people are. Um, 17. Cormac McCarthy or J.K. Rowling? Ah, I'm not six years old, so how can I say Cormac McCarthy? So, again, by default, uh, J.K. Rowling. Hannibal Lecter or Voldemort? Well, I'd say Hannibal Lecter, um, simply because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, I, I'm too old for Harry Potter. Um, but there is a moral problem of making a serial killer cannibal have some funny lines and ask for the reader's sympathy or the film goer's sympathy. I think that is morally troubling. Uh, 19. T.C. Boyle or George Saunders? Well, if George Saunders writes another book uh, like um, Lincoln in the Bardo, I'm going to say Saunders, but that's his first novel. Um, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. 20. Good writing or good story? Good writing. I'm not interested in the story. There's six stories to go around. Um, it's the characters that people those stories and how well written they are. So it's always good writing, particularly good language, good imagery for me. Um, 21. Why or children's lit? No. Nope. 22. Irony or humour? Um, I don't really know. Uh, I'm happy with both. Um, humour is really hard to do in, in fiction in sort of laugh out loud humour it's not the same as being in a sort of dark amphitheatre uh, you know seeing a funny film or a funny play or a stand up comic so you know I respect to people who make me laugh and Steve Tesich's Carew is one book that 
makes me laugh. So total respect to to humour. But you know, I like irony as well. So uh, both. 23, sci-fi or horror? Sci-fi all day long. 24, fantasy or non-fiction? They're the same. 25, rather find a new favourite contemporary writer or a new favourite old-time great? A good book's a good book. I don't care who it's written by, so, you know, either. 26, sonnet or haiku? Nope. 27, Sestina or Villanelle? Isn't Villanelle a female villain? Don't know. 28, spend the evening at a library or a bookstore? Well, I'd say bookstore just because you can talk. So you can talk to other patrons, which you can't really do in a library. 29, magazine or Wikipedia article? Well, it depends. If it's, if it's for research, I'm afraid I'm going to go Wikipedia article all day long. If it's just idle killing time, why am I idly killing time? So, you know, I can't remember the last time I picked up a magazine. Um, OK, uh, 30, dictionary or encyclopedia? Well, you've missed one out. Dictionary, thesaurus, or encyclopedia. So I'd go thesaurus one, dictionary two, encyclopedia three. Um, 31, the writer, I would like to write my biography. Well, it's not that I'd like him to write it, but I'd be interested in reading it, which is um, God's sort of verdict on my life, and uh, as shown to me by St. Peter, hopefully, not Satan. Uh, it'll be interesting to read what he had to, what take he had on the whole thing. Um... 32, I do or do not highlight in my books. So as I say, I don't highlight, but I, oh, well, this comes on to 33. I do or do not write in my books. I don't write very often, but I do write in non-fiction books occasionally because they're sort of probably going to be for research pur purposes. So I recently finished reading The Age of Spiritual Machines by Ray Kurzweil. And normally I don't write. All I do is I dog ear. I don't know if you can see that. I dog ear a page, so there's something on that page I want to come back and, and nick, basically. Um, but this book was so fiendishly put together, I did have to write. Uh, can you see? Yeah, yeah, I did have to write uh, in this one because it was referring, it was direct, I was making the link between other bits that I dog eared. Um, and I wanted to remind myself of the thought, which wasn't overtly stated in the book. So, yeah, you can get what I'm saying. Um, earliest memory of a library, can't remember, sorry. Uh, 35, last time you went to the library, I hadn't been to a library for years, and I wanted to go to track down a book recently, and I couldn't find my library card because it's been so long, so that was a bust. Uh, 36, have you ever stolen or accidentally stolen books from the library? No, I haven't, I'm very law-abiding. 37, ballpark, how many books do you own? I I'm guessing a thousand, I don't know. Uh, 38. How many books do you think would make for a reasonable personal library? I don't understand that concept. It's going to vary from people to people. It depends on what space you've got, you know. So I would, I suppose it's fair to say that my dream would be to make enough money to have a, a study. No, not a man cave. A study which had wall-to-wall -wall bookshelves and I could have all my books because at the moment they're outside in the shed. Um, so I guess... Yeah, that's my personal circumstance. Uh, 39. So, there's Sense and Sensibilities and Sea Monsters, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, etc. How do you feel about the phenomenon? Exploitative. Uh, I don't feel that, you know, the, 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 the canon is, is sacred and can't be touched. Far from it. But um, they just seem tawdry. Uh, 40. Horror trope you would like to see get more love. Uh, I don't read horror, so I'm going to say love trope you would like to get to see more horror. How about that one? Uh, 41, something you think gets underutilised in sci-fi. Well, I think the problem with, with sci-fi is that uh, we think as humans and we write as humans and it's almost impossible. No, I don't think it is almost impossible. But writers, to my mind, have yet to demonstrate a genuinely alien consciousness and perceptive uh, set of, you know, perceptive apparatus. It's all too anthropomorphic. Um, 42, flash fiction, form of and format of literature, or is it just a short story dummy? Well, that question makes no sense to me. You know, short story is a format and form of literature. So how's that any different? But uh, those of you who don't know, I write an awful, I've published five collections of flash fiction, so I'm obviously a big, big devotee of it. Uh, and to me, it offers the most possibility for genuinely experimental challenging forms of fiction so uh, big fan 43 if you could own one book from all of history what would it be 
I, I, I don't have a specific title, but I think I'd like to own an original palimpsest where the you know books are overwritten because they're basically recycling this the, the scarce material of paper or wood or whatever it was written in, and that you know you can see the original versions below. So I think I'd like like one of those. Forty three. If you <coughs> if you could own one. No, I've just done that. Forty four. Audio books the same as reading. Well, I don't listen to audio books, so I have no comment to make on this other than one pro and one con to my mind but not having ever read it I don't know if these are fair or relevant um, when we read books we're sounding inside our head at one level anyway so is that any different to an audiobook I don't know uh, the con though is that uh, because an actor or the author is reading on an audiobook they are pacing the read for you you might not read it at the same rhythm so I don't know 45. Most literary songwriter of your lifetime. Do we mean the most well-read and referencing of, uh, of singers or do we mean um, most sort of poetic in their own words? So if it's the most poetic in their own words, I say Ian Curtis of Joy Division. If we're saying the most well-read and, and referenced in their songs, I'd say Howard Devoto of Magazine. Um, 46. What writer embarrasses you the most because you haven't read them? Well, if I haven't read them, it's because I don't want to read them. So I'm not embarrassed in the slightest. And in the case of people like Stephen King, I will proudly say I haven't read him. It's not embarrassing. Uh, 47. What writer embarrasses you because you've read too much from them? Well, again, none. You know, I've wanted to read them. Now, there are writers. I keep banging my head against the wall because I keep reading them. And I keep being uh, not satisfied. Nicola Barker comes to mind. But I'm not embarrassed. You could say I'm sort of being masochistic, but that's your judgment. I don't see it as being masochistic. Um, 48. What is a biography you're looking forward to reading? Can't think of any. Um, for, uh, 49. Do you have a dream reading cubby? I assume by cubby you mean a sort of a niche or a nook, somewhere sort of comfy or whatever, or specialised, specially set up for you to read. And uh, I don't, other than, as I say, having a study of my own, wall-to-wall -wall books, uh, I don't really have one. I have had the privilege of reading in the British, the old British uh, library uh, in Bloomsbury, and that was fantastic with its sort of big cupola and light and everything. Um... 50. The last literary phenomenon that really got your gears grinding. Well, it didn't get my gears grinding, but I was rather troubled by the Fifty Shades of Grey phenomenon because, because if it had stayed sort of small scale, low, you know, low key, you know, pop up that I probably wouldn't have heard of it, but I would have been fine with that. But because it was so mass market, I think millions and millions of people consume the same set of sexual fantasies. I find very troubling. Because the whole point about erotica and sexual fantasies is there's a spectrum, you know, of, of just so much. But when so many people are consuming in their reading the same ones, I, that just unnerves me a little, really. I haven't read it, I have to say, or seen the films. Um, 51. What was the last piece of literature that changed the, way, changed the way you read? None. The only way a piece of literature could change the way I read is if I'm reading in the street, not looking where I'm going, bump into a lamppost and you know knock myself out have to recuperate at home um so i wouldn't be able to read in the street for a while i don't know uh 52 what booktuber have you been watching the most recently um sure the book maniac uh eric lonesome reader Celia, and bookish north okay thanks very much till next